Hello everyone, this is Dr. Raja Vajit and in today's video we'll discuss about the Brugada syndrome. We'll discuss about the prevalence, the etiology, the ECG criteria and clinical criteria of Brugada syndrome and management of Brugada syndrome. Before going into details of the ECG criteria of Brugada syndrome, few words about the prevalence and etiology of Brugada syndrome. So Brugada syndrome is a rare cause of sudden cardiac death in structurally normal hearts. Although it's a rare cause of sudden cardiac death, but uh, since its description in 1992, uh, there have been an exceptional increase in number of cases of Brugada syndrome over the time. It is basically due to abnormality in the sodium channels of the cardiac muscles. Sodium channels of cardiac muscles. Almost 50% cases of the Brugada syndrome, they are sporadic. While the rest of the 50% of the cases, they are familial and they could be autosomal dominant as well. So it is important to screen the first degree relatives of the patient diagnosed with Brugada syndrome. Furthermore, you need to be aware of two terms. One is Brugada pattern. And number two is Brugada syndrome. These both of these terms they they can't be used interchangeably because uh, they mean uh, they have a different meaning in clinical practice. Now Brugada pattern it is the ECG criteria to describe uh, describe the presence of Brugada sign. Initially, when it was described in 1992 by Brugada brothers, there were uh, three types: type one, two, three. But with the evolution in the understanding of genetics and uh, in the Brugada syndrome, this ECG pattern has been limited to type 1 only. In this video, we'll have a look at the other two types of the Brugada pattern as well, but mainly we'll focus on the type 1. Now, Brugada syndrome. Brugada syndrome, we call it a Brugada syndrome when a patient has an ECG pattern suggestive of Brugada sign. And the patient meets the clinical criteria clinical criteria of a Brugada syndrome. Now, firstly, let's discuss the Brugada sign uh, on the ECG. Here's the ECG uh, of a Brugada type 1 Brugada pattern. Now, before going into details of, of the Brugada pattern or Brugada sign, as with every ECG, we need to look at whether it is a standardized ECG or not and uh, then we'll have to go through the rate, rhythm and axis. Although there is no standardization uh, written on this ECG, but uh, the, we can say that this is a 12 lead ECG and when we look at the lead 2, that is the rhythm strip at the bottom of the ECG, we can see that there is a P wave upright symmetrical P wave before each QRS complex. So this is our sinus rhythm. Again, the heart rate would be 300, 150, and 100. Our patient is a bit tachycardic, so the heart rate is around 100 beat per minute. Similarly, for axis, as we know, we look at lead one and lead AVF. The QRS direction in lead one is upward, and it is upward in AVF as well, so it is a normal axis. Now, going into details of the Brugada pattern. So the ECG criteria for Brugada sign or Brugada pattern is that there should be at least two millimeter curved upward ST segment elevation in any two of lead V1 to V3 plus there should be T wave inversions in those two of the three leads. We have a closer look at lead V1 to V3. You can see that this is our baseline and we can see that there, there is a ST elevation in lead V1. It is one, two, three, around four millimeter ST elevation. 4 millimeter ST elevation and we can see that there is a T wave inversion uh, followed by this curved upward ST elevation. Similarly, in lead V2, if the baseline is here, we can see 1, 2, 3 and 4 millimeter ST elevation followed by T wave inversion. While in lead 3, this is the baseline and we can see that it is around 3 millimeter, 2 millimeter ST elevation followed by a T wave inversion. 
so according to the, to the criteria if there is st elevation of at least 2 mm in any two of the contiguous v1 to v3 leaves uh, is present we'll call it a brugada pattern so this is the only type of brugada pattern if uh, it is accompanied by the cl clinical criteria then we'll call it a brugada syndrome but if there is no clinical criteria met in a patient there is no significance of this pattern Similarly, previously described uh, patterns of Brugada, types of Brugada, Brugada that are type 2 and type 3, they are no longer relevant unless they are, uh, they are electrophysiologically stimulated to be converted into type 1 and they, they meet the criteria, clinical criteria for Brugada syndrome as well. Now, we'll learn what is the clinical criteria along with the ECG criteria to, to label a patient as having Brugada syndrome. So, for a patient to be labeled as Brugada syndrome, the patient should have a clinical criteria that is type 1 Brugada pattern along with any one of the following clinical criteria. First point is documented ventricular fibrillation or polymorphic VT. Secondly, if a patient has a ECG criteria of type 1 Brugada pattern along with a family history of sudden cardiac death in an age less than 45 years old. Third is if there is cove co type ECG changes in any of the family members of the patient. By family member, we mean uh, first degree relative. Now, the fourth is if the patient has a type 1 Brugada pattern and we are able to induce VT by electrophysiological stimulation. Fifth of this clinical criteria is if patient has had an episode of syncope in past or present with the syncope. And six is nocturnal agonal respiration. So if patient has a type 1 Brugada pattern and the patient presents with any of these six clinical criteria, we'll call it a Brugada syndrome. Now coming to the treatment, The only noun treatment which has a definite morbidity and mortality benefit is ICD. So if patient meets the ECG criteria and clinical criteria of Brugada syndrome, we should, uh, we should con consider placing an ICD for that patient. Now, so if, some, if a patient is unsuitable for, uh, for ICD placement, for example, the patient is too frail or terminally ill, uh, the other option could be cunidine. Now, before calling it a day, let's have a look at the other two ECG patterns of, uh, of the Brugada, which were previously termed as Brugada type 2 and type 3, but they are no longer used. Now, in type 2 pattern, there should be ST elevation of at least 2 mm in any two of V1 to V3. But the difference here is that the shape of the ST elevation is, is saddle shape. It is not coved upward as in type 1. And type 3 is ST elevation less than 2 mm. As I mentioned earlier, type 2 and type 3, they are no longer considered as Brugada pattern. They are just of historical pattern. This is all for today. Hopefully you liked the video. If you guys have any comments or any questions, feel free to ask under the comment section of this video. Take care till next time.